I've got variance, wonderful. Now the situation we have just arrived at is this spot here. You're like, oh, I know the variance now. So what if I modify the situation in some way? What impact would that have? Now, in order to tackle this particular question, I think it'll be helpful to look at the two modifications separately, okay? Um, if you think back to like when we were doing graphing functions, right? I know this is slightly different, but it's like, oh, there's like some scaling or stretching that happens, and then what usually would this do? It's not a scale or a, or a stretch. What do we call that? It's, it's, to the right. it's, a, it's a transformation. They're all transformations. In particular, that'd be a shift of some kind, right? Okay, so let's just consider them both separately. Um, if we, for example, were thinking about this, Let's just do this one first. I think it's simpler. You'll see why in a second. Okay. Hmm. What I'm basically doing is, instead of this situation over here, look carefully, just eyes up for a second. Instead of a game where I can score 10 and 20, this is me imagining some game where the scores are 9 and 19. Okay. Hey, Addy. Do you want to hand, hand that to me? Yeah. Thank you. Grab a seat. Make sure you with me. Do you see what I've done? Do you see how this is the variance of, this is x, this is my x distribution, this is my x minus 1 distribution. Same game, just everything's worth a little bit less. Okay? Now think about this. I can do a lot of this same stuff, right, of calculating variance, but numbers change. For instance, instead of this 10 and this 20, right, they're not going to be 10 and 20 anymore, right? They're going to be? 9 and 19. So I'm going to write, I'm just going to write those parts first, because I know they're going to change. Okay, so I'll just highlight that those two changes have happened, right? The next thing that appears when I'm working out variance is mu, right? I take away mu. But when I change the scores, mu changes with it. The mean changes with it. What happens when you subtract one from these? What happens to the mean? Reduces. The mean also reduces. It reduces, because you're doing everything by the same amount, it reduces by one as well. Does that make sense? If you want to prove it to yourself, you can go and do this process for 9 and 19. But I'll tell you right now, you're just going to get exactly one less. It'll be 15. Does that make sense? So I've removed all the scores down, so the mean comes with them. So now I go take away 15 squared and take away 15 squared. Does that make sense? So I've got my x's done. I've got my mu's done. The last piece is these probabilities. How does, um, how does this x minus 1, how does that change the probabilities in this game? Let me ask that question again. Think about it carefully. Here's the original distribution. Here's my new distribution. How do the probabilities, 0.4 and 0.6, how do they change when I do this x minus 1 thing? Um, that looks like a decrease. So do they change? Oh. Hmm. I don't think they would. Now, this is partly a trick question. I sort of apologize, but not really. Okay. Can you see if, if the scores on the game are what changes? These things here have not been shifted at all, right? We certainly don't want them to like move down, for example. If they went to like, I don't know, 0.3 and 0.5, our probabilities wouldn't add up to 1 anymore, would they? Right? They've pretty much got to stay put. So the 0.4 and the 0.6 that I had in my original variance, they're going to be the same. Is that OK? Yeah. Right? Scores changed, means changed, but probabilities stayed the same. Do not reach for your calculator. Do not reach for your calculator. Have a look at this and then compare it to what we did earlier. Right? Minus two. 9 minus 15, what is that? It's negative 6. Doesn't that seem familiar? Uh, 19 take away 15 is 4. Doesn't that seem familiar? In fact, it's exactly the same, right? You're going to get all the same numbers. What we're concluding now, and this is important to write, right, is that this variance, if you shift everything, it's, it's the same variance you got before, yeah. right? You move all the scores down, or you can move all the scores up if you wanted. No adjustment. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that variance, that modification doesn't change it. Okay. So that's the first one. I'm just going to put a tick on that, right? Done. What happens when we do the other modification? I am running out of space, so I'm going to continue on the left-hand side. Uh, it is, but... Like, I could just give you the answer and just say, yep, there you go, it's one mark. But actually what it revealed to me is there's a concept underneath here that either um, I didn't teach you very effectively or you did not learn effectively. So the concept is worth drilling down on. And that's kind of what we said in review, right? I said, don't be satisfied just like, oh, the answer's C, and then go. There's clearly something underneath why I couldn't pick that out in the first place. 
Let's try and work out. Let's try and apply our brains to figure out what this will do. Okay? Hmm. Now, we're, we're going to do all of this in a second, but before I do it, I just wonder what you might anticipate. We've just seen the difference that this modification makes. Um, what difference might this modification make? Is it times by three? Let's find out. In exactly the same way that I modified these scores, let's try and do that for this new distribution. Okay? So for starters, I won't have scores of 10 and 20 anymore. I'll have scores of? 20 and 30. 20 and... Sorry, 30 and 60. 30 and 60, right? We multiply by 3. I was like, you caught me. Okay, we multiply by 3. Okay, so I'm going to have 30 take away the mean. And then I'm also going to have, am I going to have a smash? Yeah. Um, 60 take away the mean. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Now, remember, we've, we've tripled all the scores. So you know how we subtracted 1 and that changed the mean as well? How will tripling all the scores change the mean? The mean will also triple. If you are not convinced that that is the case, go ahead and think about, uh, here's the line where we worked it out, right? Think about what happens if I replace that 10 with a 3 times 10, and then replace the 20 with a 3 times 20. Can you see there's just a factor of 3 that goes all the way through? So instead of 16, what will my new mean be for this guy? 48. 48, thank you. 48, 48. So there's my takeaway mu. I square, and then what was the last thing that I need for variance? Multiply the probability. And as we've already established, they don't change. Okay? How are you feeling? Is that all right? Hmm. Both things in the brackets triple. Huh. Okay. All right. Now, you can go to an answer at this point. Are some of my numbers wrong? Is my arithmetic funny? Or you're giving me that look that I've done. <laughs> no, 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 it's just uh, calculated a slightly different view. Oh, okay. Oh, really? I'm just seeing if there is an error. I think I made it somewhere. Well, I mean, I'm thinking back to here's how we calculated mu. 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 It's like a funny mod yes? Did you get it again? So I got five million. Say again? So your original I'm tripling all the scores, yeah? That's that's what this means. Okay, take all the scores on your previous distribution and triple them. I use ten and twenty, so No, what he's done is subtract the one, he's just a bit ahead of Are you sorry? Are you are you doing this? Are you doing this? Read the question, my friend. Read the question. Okay, all right, all right. So, okay. You, you, really, you really made me panic for a second. Okay, all right. I wonder if we have sufficiently stored for you. Has anyone worked this out? 216. 216? Yes, 216. 216. Uh, I'm going to just skip a line. You'll see why in a second. 216. So now, I'm trying to understand the relationship between my original variance and this guy. What is the relationship between the original variance and my new variance? They're both, numbers. They're both numbers. High fives, serang, you get an E for effort. Um, what is the more close relationship? There's a multiple of 9, isn't there? Right? Uh, 240 would be 10 times bigger. This is one multiple less. So this is. It's, it's 3 squared multiplied by our original variance. Okay? So what we've noticed is. When you do this shift, nothing happens. Variance stays put. Because this is a measure of spread, right? When you multiply by 3, you spread out everything a lot more. Why is it 3 squared? And the answer is, it goes back to our formula for what variance is. It has squaring in it. Does that make sense? Now, I said I would I'd come back to this line. I left it empty. Why is it 3 squared? Have a look at where the 3 appeared, right? Let me, um, let me do this line in long form for you, and I'd love you to follow this with me. What is 3? It's, sorry, what is 30? It's 3 lots of 10, the original score. What's 48? Well, it's 3 lots of the original mu. Do you remember that? Yeah. Right? So that's all been tripled, then we square, then we multiply by probability. So far, so good? Yeah. I do exactly the same thing for the other one. Um, it'll be 3 lots of 20 minus 3 lots of the original mu, and then I square that, and then I multiply by a probability. Can you see why 3 squared has snuck its way in to down here? Because look, the 3's are here. You can factor them out, but then they get squared. 
Yes? The threes are here, you can factor them out, but then they get squared. squared. Hence the three squared here. Make sense? So now I can say, going back to the actual question, right? This minus one, it's just a red herring. It's just a distractor, right? It doesn't change your variance at all. This is where the action really happens. So what you'd do is, here's my rough color. You would say, well, it's going to expand everything out by this factor here, that's the part that matters, 3 squared multiplied by whatever your variance used to be. We were doing one on this manufactured example, but their one is 2.6. And that's the answer. Uh, yes, which is, I can't remember which option it is, but it's there. Okay. Does that make sense? Does it click for you? Because I know sometimes the solutions, by the way, the solution just says this. So if you didn't know what was going on underneath, you'd be like, not helpful, right? So that's why you've got to ask that question because um, then you can get a better understanding.